uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming, and uh, thanks for the chairman's introduction. And uh, uh, before I started my talk, I'd like to introduce myself briefly again. Uh, I got my bachelor's degree in Heilongjiang by e Agriculture University, majoring in landscape architecture. After that, I spent five years in Beijing Forestry University to get my PhD, uh, majoring in landscape uh, plants and uh, ornamental horticulture. Uh, this picture is uh, my university in the northeast part of China. And this picture is Beijing Forestry University. And after that, I, uh, in the following two years after that, I worked in Fujian Agriculture and the Forestry University in the College of Landscape Architecture as a teacher, teaching uh, genetics and uh, breeding and uh, uh, garden nurseries for the undergraduate students. Uh, last September, I came to Texas A&M Agri Life Research Center at El Paso, and the guidance of Dr. Gunghua Niu uh, to study salt tolerance of landscape plants. And these two pictures are the scenery of the campus of uh, Bafu. And uh, there's more information. Here is my hometown in, in Hebei province, and here is my university in the northeast part of China. And after that, I went to Beijing to stay there for five years. And here is where I work. And today's talk is part of the research that I did during my uh, doctoral study. And uh, now, let me start. As we all know, this lily is one of the most important cut flowers in the flower market, among which oriental lily is famous for its elegant, refined, aromatic, and pleasant uh, characters, making it especially popular among Chinese people. And to a great extent, the quality of lily bulb determines the quality of the cut flower. And so, knowing the rules of the lily bulb growth and development is significant for the cultivating of good quality of lily bulb and the flowers. Before I started my research, my experiment, I made a hypothesis. I made a hypothesis of a salt sink exchange of lily as a bulb. Oh, sorry. Uh, as for a lily bulb, before it, after its dormancy, when it was planted, before the leaves expanded, that we that the nutrient in the scales will be provided for the shoot for the shoot to development and growth and after that when the leaves when the leaves ex expanded it has uh, the ability to sing to photo to photosynthesize it and uh, it will provide the nutrients for the development of the flower bud and the bulb and the ground. This will continue until to the end of this growth circle. Is that right? Is it true? Here comes the questions. The first one is, does the bulb only serve as source or sink at a given time? And the second one is, when does the bulb function as source turn into sink and vice versa. With these two questions, I started my experiment in three aspects. 
The first one is about uh, the changes of, carb of carbohydrate contents in the lily bulb. We choose oriental hybrid lily spawn as the plant material grown in a greenhouse in Beijing. And this table shows the sampling stages. There are 10 sampling stages. I want to remind you to keep in mind about uh, four stages, uh, which I will mention many times in the following talk. They are, uh, the first is the early stage of flower bud development and growth. When the top, the top flower bud reaches one centimeter long, and the second stage is middle stage of the flower bud growth and development, at which time the top flower bud reaches 3 cm long. The third stage is uh, for bloom, is for blooming. At this time, over 50% of the flower buds is blooming. And the, third, the fourth stage that I want you to keep in mind is 50 days after blooming. These photos show some of the sampling stages and the situation of the plants at each time. To be specific, I divided the scales into three parts. The outer scale, middle scale, and the inner scales. For the outer scales, the three layers from outside are considered as the uh, outer scales and uh, three layers in inside in the, around the shoot around the shoot here are considered as the inner scales the parts between the two are considered as the middle scales and my study was con was focused on the outer and the middle scales. The starches and the sugars were extracted by using 80% uh, ethanols and the measurement are the traditional for the traditional physiological method. Here comes the results and uh, let's see what happened in the outer scales first. For the starch, for the starch content change in the blue line, as we can see here, and uh, after planted, the content of starch decreased sharply to the stage that I have mentioned at the middle stage of the flower bud development when the, the top flower is 3 cm long and after that it stays at an even level until like this until 30 days after blooming after that the content of starch increased gradually Till the end. Now let's see what about the middle scales. The content of starch decreased first to the point that at the same stage that I've mentioned, the same as what happened in the outer scales at the middle stage of flower bud development when the top when the top flower bud is three centimeters long after that the content increased gradually let's see what happened in the basal plate there are two characters the first one is the contents of the three carbohydrates are very low, relatively low, than those in the outer and the middle scales. That's the first one. And the second one is, 
they didn't change significantly during the whole growth season. Let's put the outer and middle scales together to compile. Then we can see that starch as the main storage material decreased first and then increased in both outer and middle scales, but the increase points are different. For the outer scales, they function as source from planking to fall blooming, as we can see from here to fall blooming stage. As for the middle scales, they function as a source from planking to the mid stage of flower bar development. So, there are their differences. And uh, now let's move on to the second part of the experiment. Uh, we observed the microstructure, ultrastructure changes of bulb during the source sink exchange. The materials are the same as the previous one, and the sampling stage reduced to four stages from ten. Uh, namely, they are plant at planting and uh, at vegetative growth. The third one is the fall blooming, and the last one is the synthesis. The sampling site for the Ultra structure is, we can see from in the between the big vascular bundle and the small vascular bundle, uh, bundle, uh, and just in the uh, shows as in the red rectangular, and uh, the outer scales and the middle scales were started. From these pictures, we can see that the closer to the vascular bundle, the less and smaller of the starch grains distributed. So, the distribution pattern creates a, con a concentration gradient of carbohydrates, carbohydrates around the vascular bundle, which helps the carbohydrates to load to and unload from the phylum. Let's see the ultra structure of the outer scales at four different stages. At the first stage, after planting, two days after planting, there are lots of starch grains, which uh, SG stands for, and lipid jobs. L here we can see in picture two uh, B here. There are lots of uh, starch grains and uh, lipid jobs there. When it comes to the vegetative stages, uh, it's about thirty days after planting, and the leaves are growing but no flower buds. The number of starch grains and grains and uh, lipid jobs decreased significantly, which we can see from these pictures. Besides that, we can also see that uh, surrounding the plasmodesmata here, these and these PD, vasculars and mitochondria were observed, indicating that the catabolism is taking place. Let's see what's the situation in the outer scales for the last two stages. At four, uh, at four uh, blooming stage, the number of starch grains reaches the lowest level. We can see there the number of the starch grains are very few at this time. And lipid jobs are disappeared. We can't see them at all. At the at the end of the growth season, that we can see the cells were filled with the starch grains and lipid jobs again. 
So the anabolism, anabolism took place dominantly, dominantly after fall blooming from this stage to the end of the growth season. Let's see uh, what happened in the middle scales at the fourth stage. The number of the starch grains and lipid drops uh, decreased significantly from planting from here to here, decreased significantly, and indicating that the middle scales serve as source to provide nutrients for the uh, for the plants to grow. At the fall blooming stage, the number of starch grains appears increase than that than what we can see here at vegetative growth stage. And at the end, at the end here at synthesis uh, stage, starch grains and lipid drops fill the cell again, the same situation as what happened in the outer scales. So let's make a summary of the two parts of the experiment. The first is that the lowest level of starch grains in outer scales is at fourth blooming stage, while well, that occurs in middle scales before fall blooming. Since the starch grains increased after vegetative growth stage, as we have mentioned here. The second one is the ultra structure observation results are coherent with these from the physiological measurement, the first part of the experiment. Now let's move on to the third part. Uh, it's about the transportation directions of assimilates during the sourcing source sink exchange. Laboring of 6,5 carboxy fluorescein fluorescein dioxy uh, diacetate was conducted at five different growth and development stages and from three parts of the plants respectively. This table shows uh, the stages and the sites. Let's see. In the first row, that it's about the state, the stages. There are five stages, and the second, the second row shows about the set, the site where the CFDA was introduced. Oh, I've got to mention this that uh, we call it CFDA for short. Um, let me show you where to, for the outer scales that I have mentioned that, uh, for this time is just one of the scale from the outside of the bulb. And uh, for the lower leaves here, lower leaves, it, it was the fourth and the fifth leaves from the bottom. And for the top leaves, here, top leaf, it means the fourth and fifth leaf from the top. This shows the results where the green fluorescent signals were detected. Now let's see the results of this part. At planting stage, the CFDA was conducted from here one of the outer scales. After that, after 72 hours for the CFDA to transplant, we can detect the green fluorescent signals here from the basal plate and from the shoot. The result shows that the transportation direction is from outer scale to the shoot. That means the nutrients in the scales were 
provided for the growth of the shoot. For the second stage, when the flower buds are well, one centimeter long, the CFDA was laboring from three sites, three sites respectively. First, when the CFDA was conducted, was conducted from the outer scales, from one of the outer scales, that the green fluorescent signals were detected in three parts. First, in the basal plate here that we can see, and in the stem. Also, in the flower bud, in, in the development of the flower that we can see from the petal. When the FDA was conducted, was input from the low leaf, low leaves, that the green fluorescent signal can only be detected in the flower bud. No else, no uh, nowhere else. When the CFDA was conducted from the upper leaves, that the same situation happened as the lower leaf. Only the bud, only in the bud that we can detect the green fluorescent signal, which is CF. This one, the green signal that we detected. So at this stage, the transportation direction is from the bulb and leaves and leaves to the flower bud. Let's see what happened in the third stage. When the flower bud is three centimeters centimeters long, the same uh intro in conduction place, places from these three sites. When it was from the outer scale, oh sorry. That the green fluorescent signal can be detected both in the basal plate and in the flower buds. When it was introduced, the CFDA was introduced from lower leaf here, and the same as it was introduced from outer scales that we can see the fluorescent signals are detected were detected from the basal plate and from the flower bud. When it was introduced from the upper leaves. Now we can see that only in the bud that the see that the green fluorescent can be detected. So at this stage, when the when the top flower is three centimeters long, the bulb serves as source and sink at the same time, which we call it source sink complex stage. Now let's see what happened in the fourth stage at four blooming. The same uh, conducted sites as I have mentioned before. When it was introduced from the outer scales, that three sites can be detected of the green fluorescent signals. First, from the basal plate, as it always can be detected there. And second, in the flower, now, since it's, uh, it, is, uh, it was at the fall blooming stage, so now it's a flower, so that uh, it was detected in the petal, even though the signal was very weak here. And here, now, I call it new scales, since at this time, the mid at at the state at the site that where we call it middle scales. Now it's 
began began to grow at new scales. At uh, at this stage, we even detected uh, green fluorescent signals in the new scales, where we called it middle scales before. When the CFDA was introduced from the lower leaves, that we can detect the green fluorescent signals in both basal plate and in the flower. When it was from the upper leaf, the same situation as it happened in the lower leaf. So, at this stage, the bulb also serves as a source sink complex. Why I call it a source sink complex? Because there's nutrient uh, transport from the bulb to the up to the above ground parts, but also from from the above that what we have mentioned that when it was introduced from the lower leaves and the upper leaves that the green fluorescent signal can be detected in the basal plate. So at this time the assimilates the assimilates transporting direction in the flow M of basal plate is bidirectional. When the bulb functions as source sink complex. When it was at the stage of six days, sixty days after blooming, there's no flower at all. When the CFDA was introduced from the oh sorry from the outer scales, from uh, old scales now since we call it new scales, that the fluorescent, the green fluorescent signal were detected in basal plate and in the new scales. When it was introduced from low leaves, that the same situation. When it, when the CFDA was introduced from upper leaf, the same situation. So at this stage, the bulb serve, serves as sink to store nutrients for the growth of the next season, for the next growth circle. Let's make con let's make conclusion of the three parts of the experiment. First is the starch can be defined as one of the main factors to judge the function of lily bulb as a source or sink during the growth and development stages. The second one is due to the discrepancy of the outer and the middle scales serving as source or sink at the same time. The bulb has a state of complex of source sink between it serving as source or sink merely. So let's answer the two questions that we have proposed at the beginning of the research. A lily bulb, after it was planted to the early flower bud development, when the flower bud, top flower bud is one centimeter long, the bulb serves as source only to provide nutrients for the growth of the leaves and the shoot. The function will change from source only into source think complex before it reach the stage that at the middle flower bud development stage. It will stay at this function and change into think before 60 days after blooming and serves as think only till the end of the growth season. So there were 
Ford uh, states that for the lily bulb serves as salt sink complex. The second question was answered that it was not only as salt or sink at a given time. So that's all about the experiment about the research and. Uh, for my further study, I want to use the same experiment methods to study on the new plant I'm interested. Uh, I'm very interested in uh, fly uh, fly for for rent tea. It's from China. That's all. Thank you.